Until the mid-1800s, abortions were legal and available in the United States. In 1847, the newly formed American Medical Association began a campaign to professionalize medicine by outlawing what it called quackery. Included in its ban were midwives and herbalists who had provided abortion and maternity care in their communities for centuries. During the second half of the 19th century, Victorian society began to condemn women seeking abortions as selfish, immoral, and shirking the duty of motherhood. Protestant and Catholic churches joined the medical establishment in expressing their condemnation. Meanwhile, legislation restricting abortion continued to spread, and by the turn of the century, both birth control and abortion were illegal in most states. If a woman needed medical treatment after a botched abortion, even though infected and bleeding, she was often required to testify against her husband or lover and the abortionist before she could receive medical care. I, Maria Hecht, believing I am about to die, make this my anti-mortem statement. I, Cora Alice Grimes, about to die, make this statement. On the second day of July, 1896, James Dunn, a retail merchant, gave me a packet of calomel. I, Renetti Parker, am about to die. I went to visit Dr. Parker. Well into the 20th century, a climate of fear prevailed. This 1913 film, which dramatized an illegal abortion, escaped the censors. It dared to criticize the law at a time when even information about contraception was illegal. One of the most dedicated activists, Bill Baird, had fought restrictions on birth control at the federal level. Over the years, he'd been arrested eight times for staging demonstrations. His victory in the Supreme Court, Baird versus Eisenstadt, legalized contraception for unmarried adults. 